So most people think about their hands as an asset, their minds as an asset, but never really think about their voice as an asset. When you think about the billions of dollars that are made through the entertainment business, acting, public speaking, even podcasting, we know a top podcaster who makes $9.8 million every single month because of their voice. Well, today we're going to tell you how to protect your voice as an asset. Let's get it. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But but I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I want to help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, let's go back to the video. Pay attention and listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man asks cash. So get your man right. Thursday nights, 8 p.m. You see him, change your life. Millionaire mind set the best on earth. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet when we are helping you create the mindset to live in abundance spiritually, practically, all of the above. Um, I'm excited about this interview that we have today because a lot of people do not give credit to the sound and the voice and how that is the key to building wealth. Um, you know, I remember being in a situation where, you know, I was, you know, speaking, right? As a public speaker, uh, I get 25000 or more for a keynote. And I remember being on stage and, you know, doing a call and response. And, and there was a moment in which my voice went out. And now I'm forcing myself. It's hurting me, but I have to finish the gig. And I wish I had this young lady in my life prior to, but now she is here with us, the insider. She's going to give us the game on how to protect and, and, and make sure that, that this asset, it, that is your voice, is protected at the highest level. We have celebrity vocal coach, Miss Ashayla Shanae. Hey, hey, hey. How are you, my dear? How's I'm everything? I'm so good. I'm oh, good to be man. here. So I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, I'm excited because I've never really thought about of my voice being an asset, even though when I think about, you know, my days in corporate America, yeah. uh, you know, as a banking executive, yeah. uh, it was my ability to have conversations, um, you know, with, you know, with, with, with clients. Um, it was my ability to have conversations with my sales team and yeah. motivate them uh, that made that, you know, allowed me to to, to rise in the ranks um, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, you know, my voice has allowed me uh, to be on some big stages. Yeah. Uh, it allowed me to um, really, you know, you know, motivate people into action and really move them. And, you know, whether it's, you know, as, as a as an author written 12 books and my wow. audio books, like all of that stuff, I, I never really thought about protecting the voice. Voice. Um, but you are a vo a celebrity vocal coach. Yeah, you know, schmancy pantsy. You but know? uh, you know, you just said something. Can we just get right into yes, it? Yes, ma'am. You said something really um interesting in your, you know, you were just introducing yourself from corporate America. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Yes, ma'am. Do you have voice insurance? I don't. And there's a such thing, because I didn't there even know is, there was a such thing uh -huh. as voice insurance. There is such thing as voice insurance. Like, like I can insure my voice. Absolutely. Isn't it your asset? Isn't it your moneymaker? Hmm. J-Lo insured her butt, right? Hmm. Tina Turner that. insured her legs, hmm. right? Every athlete out there insures their hands, their body parts. 
Shoot, we even had a, one of soccer players that insured his face. Wow. Right? So at the end of the day, you are a vocal athlete. Mm. Wow. You are a vocal athlete, and every day you get up, you put your voice at risk. Yeah. And there's no contingency plan. Yeah. Right? So what if one day you were to get up and no longer had a voice? Mm. You can definitely have, you know, your podcast and your videos, but you just said you make 25K yeah. just to speak. Yeah. And as we know, amateurs make money on the front end, but experts make money on the back end. So anybody of your caliber should have voice insurance. Wow. It's it's a given. As a matter of fact, it is something, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Absolutely. How do you get voice insurance? You just, uh-huh. like, how, like, how does that work? So my team yeah. actually does that. Um, I remember uh, Neo Davis. We mm-hmm. both know Neo as uh, one of my clients. And so at his mastermind, he had no voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he had no voice. And um, I remember him saying to me, Shayla, what do I do? He's freaking out. And so I said, Neo, I offer voice insurance. Mm-hmm. Right. And so my company actually does that for my high profile uh, speak. And not just high profile. Anybody can get it. Yeah. But especially for those people where your voice is, it's like a, see your voice as like a, a voice NFT. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Your voice, as a matter of fact, no one, you can close your eyes right now. Everybody can close their eyes and you can say, hey, this is Ash Cash. Yeah. Your voice has a sound, a configuration yeah. that makes it special. Yeah. So at the end of the day, um, my company, I decided, you know what? Wait, no one's out here, <laughs> you know, besides Lloyds of London, no one's out here really giving voice insurance. Mm-hmm. And so my company now provides that. And how does that work though, right? Because uh, look, this is this supposed, this supposed to be an interview, but y'all are going to learn. <laughs> <laughs> but I would need to know, right? Yeah. So, so like with car insurance, yeah. if somebody hits your car or does anything to your car, yeah. the insurance company makes you whole, yeah. right? Life insurance, you die, makes your family whole. Yeah. Um, you know, travel insurance, yeah. you go to travel. They make, but how do you, like, how does voice insurance, how does, like, if I, you know, if somebody, you yeah. know, loses their voice, yeah. How does voice insurance make them whole? So can we math it? Let's do it. And so voice insurance will really be under disability or body part insurance, Mm -hmm. right? So um, what we would do is configure how much money, what's the risk? Mm -hmm. When you show up to an event or you do a mastermind, how much money would you be making on the front end? So let's let's math it for a second, Mm -hmm. okay? You do a one-day event, Mm -hmm. right? How many people uh, would you expect to come to your one-day event? So let's say if I do a one-day event, Let's say 100 people. 100 people. What's the ticket to get in? So really depends on the the crowd. If it's a high what would be ticket, your, yeah, what would be a be? high ticket, like 2,000 potentially. Okay, so 2,000. So let's just say you had about 20 to 30 percent of that, right? Mm-hmm. Bought a 2,000. That's 200,000 right there, right? Yeah. And then let's say on the low end, a low ticket is what? About hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Yeah. So that's another, let's math that. So a hundred times a hundred, that's another ten thousand dollars right there, right? Yeah. So you're looking at two hundred and ten thousand, right? But yeah. we understand the back end as well. Mm-hmm. So you have a what? What's your uh high ticket twenty five thousand? Yeah, twenty five thousand, you want to convert what, twenty, ten oh. to twenty percent? Yeah. So let's say we had about maybe ten to fifteen people get that twenty five, right? Mm-hmm. Uh you're looking at another two fifty, another quarter of a million. Mm-hmm. All right. So what we would do with that is say, what's the potential of ash? to do a one-day event, right, where he comes, he he makes money on the front end. That's 200000 right there, 300000 right there. Plus, on the back end, he's making another 250000 300000 You're looking at almost a mil uh-huh. right there. Yeah. We would say, okay, based on the fact that he actually can lose a million dollars. Because what if one day you, you woke up, you were in, I don't know, Puerto Rico doing your mastermind, and you end up getting mold toxicity? Uh-huh. And most people never think about that. They yeah. only think about losing their voice when they're speaking. Yeah. But literally, you could be right here in this in this room right now, and there could be mold toxicity, and you don't even know it. And 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 that and that loses. you would absolutely lose your voice. There's something called mold poisoning. Mm. Seventy six, no, seventy three percent of Americans actually deal with it. Seventy three percent. Seventy three percent. And so because of that, you wake up one day, you don't have your voice, and you have to show up to 100 people that spent five grand or $2,000 to come and see you. Yeah. Wow. And so what we do with the insurance is we say, what is the potential? Half a million dollars, Mm. almost 75, you know, three quarters of a million dollars. And that's how we start to determine and quantitate what we would put as far as your voice insurance. Wow. 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 Um, And so... Talk talk to us about a Shayla. Like, how how did you get into... (laughs) Um, you know, voice, you know, voice, yeah. voice coaching and. 
it's crazy. I got into voice coaching because I lost my voice. Mm. I was a um I graduated from college, couldn't find a job, ended up doing becoming a substitute teacher. And at the time I was touring mm-hmm. um in the music industry. Mm-hmm. And I ended up Were you a singer? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I ended up developing something called vocal nodules. Mm. So vocal nodules are like callus, you know, like when you work out without gloves, you get callus on your hands. Yeah. So callus started to form on my vocal cords. Wow. And so when your vocal cords start to meet and come together, it can't meet. So when you hear people sound raspy or hoarse, mm. that's what was happening to me. And as a result of that, I end up losing my voice for six and a half weeks. Wow. I could not speak, could not sing, could not do anything. That was my bread and butter. Wow. It took me into a place of depression. Wow. Um, I had severe vocal anxiety wow. as a result of it because I didn't know if my voice would show up. Yeah. And there's so many out here that are dealing, don't know if their voice is going to show up for the podcast, mm-hmm. don't know if their voice is going to show up for their next speaking engagement. Mm-hmm. And so um, I went to the doctor, the, the ear, nose, and throat doctor at that time as a substitute teacher. I didn't have no insurance. Mm-hmm. I was barely making it, $100 a week, Yeah, you know? And so at the end of the day, I was like, sir, I, I don't have money to take nodules off my cords. And I don't know if anybody knows how vocal nodules are, are off your, take off your cords, but you can get vocal nodules from anything, mm. from poor eating, mm. from overuse, from yelling, screaming, smoking, alcohol. I mean, there's a lot of reasons you can get that. Yeah. Um, they actually cut it off or they scrape it or they laser it off. Wow. And so as a result of that, I didn't have the money. Mm. So I took my degree, mm. University of Miami, shout out to the U, <laughs> yeah. um, took my degree and um, learned holistic ways of healing my voice. And so I was able to, I became the solution wow. to the problem that I had wow. and the need that I have. And that's how I really got started. And so I started touring mm-hmm. as a result of that. And so many artists would come to me asking me, yo, Shayla, can you help me? My voice, something's wrong with it. I'm on tour. I can't, you know, I have no voice. And so I literally became the go-to person. Wow. And as a result of that, speakers started coming to me as well. And um, yeah, the rest is history. I developed my company called the Music and Arts Healing Institute when I realized, yo, I'm on to something here, right? Um, And was able to start my company with $500 and now has scaled to multiple six figures. Wow, wow. And so you've coached, um, you know, Grammy Award winning uh, soul icon Betty Wright. Yeah. uh, Yolanda Adams, Erica Campbell, uh, Patti LaBelle. Um, uh, John Cicada, um, uh, Tank, uh, um, you know, you have, you know, you know, Neo, fast out to Neo, um, and all these folks. And, you know, you know, you know, what is sort of like the, so, so I think, I think, I think first and foremost, um, I think it's intriguing to how you started a business based on something that, uh, you needed. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And believe it or not, most of us yeah. that end up becoming entrepreneurs yeah. really become entrepreneurs based on a need that we had that wasn't being met. Yeah. And so we create our own irresistible offer. Yeah. And so for me, the irresistible offer was, I don't have the money. Right. So what am I going to do? Right. Um, and at the end of the day, I was able to provide my own payoff. Yeah. Right. And now I provide so many other people that use their voice, podcasters, radio personalities, sports commentators, um, you know, uh, uh, singers, you know, uh, anyone that audi- people that do audiobooks, yeah. anyone that uses their voice um, for monetization or just purpose advancement. Yeah. As a matter of fact, think about it. If you if you were to go to a pub, if we were all talking right now, right? Everybody that's on your set, we're all talking. All you're going to hear is voices. Mm-hmm. And we never think of it as an asset. Mm-hmm. We never think about, think about it as an invaluable asset. Mm-hmm. I always tell people that there are three things that are always going to be invaluable assets. Your mind, your voice, and people's attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and talk, talk a little bit about, you know, that ability to build something yeah. that doesn't necessarily exist like was that w- was it easy for you to do that no. like you know like no. like like you've cre- you said you said you you know you said Lloyd's of London which is yeah. huge and right like like this is a, a behemoth type of business Absolutely. and so you're you know you know you you you're like rumbling with yeah. the biggest of them all yeah. um yeah, talk about that. Talk about yeah. that 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 mindset that allows yeah. you to start something yeah. that is so niche that I'm sure if you told somebody about this idea, they'll yeah. be like, you bugging. Yeah. Well, the reason why I probably wouldn't be bugging is because I'm trusted. Yeah. 
I'm an expert in my industry. Yeah. So because I'm an expert in my industry, I'm not just going to tell you, yo, get voice insurance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. Right? This is the reason why. And yeah. lots of times, most people, I don't go looking for people. People come looking for me. Mm. So when, I, when my high profile clients or anyone that comes looking for my expertise and my services say, hey, how do I preserve my voice? Or I have something coming up. I, I had another speaker, a uh, well-known speaker that was like, I have hiccups, mm. uncontrollable hiccups. Yeah. And they literally getting paid $30,000 to go on stage five minutes before going on stage. Wow. The hiccups would just wouldn't stop. Wow. And people don't think about things like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so this speaker, I uh, won't call the person's name, but this speaker literally called me five minutes before going on stage bugging out. Wow. And I don't think people understand that trust is a big thing. Yeah. So I think for me, the reason why I can be able to say, hey, listen, Ash, I, you need to go get vocal insurance is because one, I'm knowledgeable in my industry. Yeah. Two, I'm trusted. Yeah. Right. And not only that, I'm credible. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think when you have those things, your listeners listen to you mm -hmm. because you're credible. Yeah. They listen to you because you're trustworthy. Yeah. And they listen to you because you know what you're saying. You got yeah. books, you yeah. have other things and you've proven it. Yeah. And I think that is really, yes, Lloyds of London is definitely, yeah. you know, that, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking more of the integrity yeah. and the trustworthiness yeah. of the people that I serve. If you are an entrepreneur, business coach, or small business owner who wants to get more visibility for your product or service, then consider advertising on Inside the Vault. We have been seen and heard over 2 million times, and as the show continues to grow, your ad would be embedded in our episodes forever. So the return on investments on advertising with us is unmeasurable and invaluable. If you're interested in this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, then text PODCAST to 646-687-4152 or email us at info at insidethevaultshow.com. Allow your business to get the visibility that it deserves. But when you first, because that's now, though, yeah, right. Oh yeah. But talk to me, like when you first started, when you yeah. were like, you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this business without necessarily having the receipts, as, as you know, we yeah. would say. Um, what gives you that confidence, yeah. right? Like, what makes you say, you know what? Um, you know, I'm gonna start a business. Yeah. Like, what? You know, were you doing something else before yeah. then? Like, 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 take me th to that to yeah. that beginning journey. So it's interesting you know? because I was working. <laughs> I took a break from the industry and I was working in a nonprofit world. Yeah. And I remember I was overseeing a half a million dollar budget for the city and city of Miami. Yeah. I was running there. 501c3 for the whole city of Miami. And I was like, yo, I don't really want to do this, yeah. but I'm here. And I remember they brought me in the office and they say, uh, they said to me, we got to let you go. Mm. And I was like, why? Well, we don't have the money in the budget, but I'm over the budget. Like I can see everything. And I got laid off. Mm. I got laid off. I only had $500 to my name. Wow. I had no, no health insurance. Yeah. I had no 401k. Yeah. I had none of those things. Yeah. Um, I remember taking $395, Ash, I went, I begged a gentleman down the street in my down the street from my house. I said, listen, I only got I only have five hundred dollars to my name. Can I just borrow a little closet cubicle? Wow. I just want to start something. I gotta do something. Cause I would I don't ever want to be in a position where someone else determines mm. how I eat. Yeah. Right? I said that would be the last time that ever happened. And it was risky. Mm. It was very scary. $395. He gave me mm. as rent. Mm. I remember that was when MySpace was out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I took my little flip phone yeah. and I started taking pictures yeah. and saying, hey, I, I got four chairs from Costco. I flip them out. I had a little Casio piano. I said, yo, my business is open. Mm. That's how I started. Wow. Um, I learned, I lost a lot of money along the way, yeah. but then mentorship. Yeah. And I need to talk about mentorship because yeah. it wasn't until I really understood, wait a minute, in order for me to uh, get a return, or I have to seed what I need. Yeah. And so at that time, the school of hard knocks for me, I didn't have mentors at the time to show me what it was to run a business. I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Um, but when I started to get into mentorship and talk about Betty Wright, mm -hmm. Betty Wright was one of the first mentors to take me up under her wings. Yeah. Um, I toured with her for 17 years wow. until the day she died. Wow. Wow. And um, 
Mm. until the day she died. And um, she taught me so much about the industry because she was the first black woman mm -hmm. to ever become a millionaire and, and turn gold mm. uh, with her own independent record label yeah. in Miami. Yeah. Right? She yeah. was the queen of Miami Soul and she was more than just a singer. You know, you had the Diddies and the Khalids and mm. all of them looking up to her, mm. but she was a businesswoman yeah. and she taught me so much about business. Yeah. So having her, having the Yolanda Adams in my life, yeah. you know, and then of course, meeting people like a Neil Davis, mm -hmm. meeting people like a Coach Kelly, J mm -hmm. to that that's what really got it to where it is now yeah. but a lot of it was really honestly school of hard knocks and I will not tell any entrepreneur out here that it's all gravy yeah. and strawberries and cream no you're gonna have to learn yeah you're yeah. gonna have to learn what it is to invest right you're gonna have to learn what it is to money right you're gonna have to learn what it is to have strategies yeah. um learn what it is to have succession plans learn yeah. what it is to budget yeah. learn what it is to go without mm -hmm. until you can there was many times where I didn't pay myself mm. I paid my I paid my staff, but I did not pay myself. Wow, wow, yeah, yeah. No, I love it. I love it. And I and I and I, I just wanted to kind of like say that because yeah. Yeah. you know I feel like that you know there are is I mean someone right watching right now one yeah. of our insiders are watching right now, um, and they are in a position where they have an idea. Yeah. The idea might not be sexy, yeah. right? It might not be something that everybody's doing. Um, but but what is that thing that's gonna gonna, you know, have them take that next step? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and honestly, yeah. I think that um it's a blessing um, you know, for you to be in this space because, yeah. you know, I mean, the truth be told, um, there's millions of people that need you, you know, need your services. Like this is a, you know, multi-million dollar, yeah. billion dollar business yeah. that, you know, is, is, you know, as the word continues to, to, to get out there, yeah. you know, you I man, I already see your business and flourishing, you know, Thank you. beyond, right? Because, you know, again, um, you know, you perish from what you don't know, right? Absolute lack of knowledge, lack right? Lack of knowledge. And, and so, you know, me as a speaker, there's, you know, there's just so much that I didn't know. Like, and, and, it, and it's crazy because it almost seems obvious. Like, like, uh, you get this, like, yeah, protect, you know, protect your voice. Right. And so, you know, you know, what are some, some bad habits, right? Yeah. That, that speakers <laughs> do that are like harming their, their voice. Absolutely. Well, first thing, and I'll, I'll just ask you because you're a speaker here. Yes. When you get up in the morning, do you warm up your voice? I don't. All right, so if you were to go on the basketball court, would you stretch first? Absolutely. So then, yeah, this is the court. Yeah. This is the court. And I think one yeah. of the one of the biggest things, misnomers, um, especially with speakers, I would say is they don't warm their voice up yeah. at all. There is no daily regimen. Yeah. And I always say things like, you know, um, Kobe had a coach. Mm. Jordan had a coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? All the greats had coach. Yeah. They had coaches. So if you're a vocal athlete, how come you don't have one? Yeah. And I always say you always want to make sure that you have your money voice five. Mm. This is your money voice. This is mm. your ass. This is real estate. Yeah. And so uh, not warming up and not cooling down the voice. That is something, especially that I talked to Neo. Mm -hmm. So now I have him warming up every single time yeah. he does something. And I teach him, you know, certain uh, regimens and things to do. Um, another one is you got to lessen the alcohol consumption. Mm -hmm. And the reason that is, is because alcohol is dehydrating mm -hmm. and it produces acid reflux. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, when you're sleeping at night, that acid is coming up from your stomach, it's mm -hmm. going up your esophagus, and it's burning away and eating away at your throat. Wow. And so when you wake up, you you have a sore throat and yeah. you're like, yo, why is my voice gone, right? Yeah. It's because of the fact that you're consuming so much alcohol. Um, another thing too is making, you know, uh, not eating right. Yeah. Right? A lot, you sound like what you eat. Word. You sound like what you eat. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people don't understand that whatever you put into your body, whatever you put in will either make money for you or lose money for wow. you. Whatever comes out will either make money for you or lose money for yeah. you. So things like high acid foods, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the citrus fruits, the 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 sodas, the sports drinks, mm -hmm. right? The sugary foods, or even when it comes to mucus enhancing foods, mm -hmm. right? It's not just dairy, yeah. right? It's things like the white processed foods wow. and stuff like that, that literally rises history histamine in your body wow. and that leads to infection and inflammation. Mm. So lots of times when you have a post nasal drip yeah. and you don't know, yo, why, why do I keep clearing my throat every time I'm doing an episode or, you know, why do I always feel like I'm always congested or there's mucus? It's because one, you could be dehydrated mm. because of not, you know, just drinking lots of like sugary stuff. Mm. Uh, but two, you could be dealing with acid reflux. Mm. And then another bad habit is not drinking enough water. Mm. 
Yeah. How much water do you drink daily? Oh, I drink a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. we should be drinking at least half a body weight yeah. in fluid ounces, right? And then, of course, you know, um, not learning proper vocal utilization, like yeah. really getting with somebody to learn, how do I actually breathe correctly? Yeah. Like, how do I take pauses and cadences where I'm not just going, ah, yeah. or when you get on the stage, you're like, yo, and you yeah. just start going one yeah. time on your voice. You know, I have, I have to teach my, my speakers, listen, don't just go from zero to 100. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's not a good habit at yeah. all. Um, there's a plethora of them. Yeah. Medications. Mm. You know, uh, the, the sad news is, on you know, the sad reality is we have a lot of talented people that are dealing with mental and emotional health issues. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that I realized is that vocal health is definitely cor correlates with mental health. Mm. Believe it or not. Mm. When you are dealing with anxiety and depression and stuff like that and you don't take care of your mental health, and that's one thing I see us as entrepreneurs and especially minorities, and uh, we don't take care of our mental health. Mm. Yeah. And especially with the pandemic that has is skyrocketed in mental health, what happens is when you're dealing with that anxiety, when you're dealing with panic attacks and stuff like that or, or depression, it actually does something to your voice box. Mm. And it creates a, 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 a medical disorder called muscle tension dysphonia. It's mm. fancy word. Dysphonia just simply means hoarseness. Mm. It's hoarseness because of muscle tension, mm -hmm. because of things like stress. Wow. And our stress levels are skyrocketing. Yeah. Um, we don't know how to deal with anxiety. Mm. We have uh, perfectly hidden depression, mm. high functioning anxiety. And as entrepreneurs, we deal with anxiety. 100%, yeah. um, so because of that, I mean, those are just some of the things, yeah. you know, that we have to, you know, be able to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Watch the the things that we're we're doing as negative coping mechanisms. Yeah, and and you 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 talk you talk about like. Um, you know, waking up your voice, right? So yeah. when I wake up in the morning, I mean, I, you know, I, I was always told, I don't do it religiously, but I was always told um, that the first thing that you should put in your body is like warm water, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and lemon, right? Mm -hmm. um, is that the way to wake up the voice? Is that the right the right way to go, go about it? Well, you, okay, sorry to bust everybody's bubble, uh -oh. but when you drink water in the morning, it doesn't touch your vocal cords at all. Mm. All right? And that's a big misconception. Yeah. So one of the things I do to teach uh, people, and this is the reason why I love what I'm doing, and if I could just pause for a second and go back when you asked me, you know, like, what is it? Mm -hmm. I am living in purpose. Yeah. I realize that I get up every day and God has allowed me the opportunity to tell people how to preserve their, their asset, their yeah. voice asset, to make money for them. Yeah. Sometimes the voice is the only thing somebody has. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I'm living with purpose, in purpose, on purpose. Mm. There's Everybody is born with purpose, but we're not living with purpose, in purpose, on purpose. And so my reason for being, my why and why I do this and I go hard, that even if I never got a dime from it, I'll still do it. Yeah. It's because I understand my calling. Yeah. I understand my purpose. I understand my passion. So I just wanted to go back there because that's what's, that's what's kept me when I didn't have no clients coming in. Mm -hmm. And that's what's keeping me when I have a fluctuation of clients coming in, wow. right? Um, but to go back, just to answer your question, I think it's just so important that we understand like your warm-ups. Like I, I, I want to teach you some warm-ups. Yes. You want to do some warm-ups oh, with me? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the first thing we're not going to do. We're not going to clear the clear the throat like that. Okay. So normally when you're clearing the throat, it's because there's mucus is on the throat. Yeah. So you want to drink some water. It's just only going to clear the throat, not the vocal folds. Mm. All right? Because it's two different areas. And so I educate people about <laughs> anatomy first. So so don't clear the throat. No, just drink some water. Yeah. Or if you do something just like a light, like a like a light little um, breathy. <laughs> <laughs> like a, everybody's going to be conscientious right. of it now, right? right? But a light little breathiness because I tell people all the time, like, they, you know mm. what I'm saying? They say. Yeah. I tell people, when you find who they are, tell them to meet me outside so yeah. you can throw some hands. <laughs> because me Catch me outside because they lie. Right, right. So at the end of the day, you drinking the warm water and the lemon mm -hmm. is cool, but it's not going to do anything for the vocal cords. It's mm. just going to soothe your throat. Mm. Right? So for you, uh, a warm-up that you can do, right? You could get a bottle of water. Yeah. You can get a straw, yeah. right? And you can... Fill the bottle of water halfway. And all you're going to do is like, you can sing your ABC. You don't have to be on key. Mm -hmm. All right. You could just go. Right. And make sure the bubbles are actually forming in the water. Mm -hmm. What that does is it actually strengthens your vocal cords. So I'm, so I'm, I'm, pause. I'm blowing the, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The so you get air inside of yeah. The, you just singing in the straw, but mm-hmm. your own your own way. You okay, know I mean? gotcha. Yeah. Your own way, or you can even do it like with a Z. You could just go. Zzz, try that. Go. Zzz, Keep going. Yeah. A a. Right okay. now, now close the mouth in a little bit and just go. Zzz, Right, and you could do the same thing. And you could also do what we call just uh, sirens going up with your voice. It's starting from the lowest part of your voice and just going... And just go all the way... And come back down. Right, so you're going to breathe through your nostril. And I want you to do that. Do it in the shower. You know why? Because... Steam actually goes directly onto your voice box mm. and it lubricates your voice box. Mm. So it causes your vocal cords to stretch. Mm. So just like a muscle that you would do for anything on the court, wow. you need to stretch your muscles. Wow. So in order for you to really get the inflections that you want for your voice to be ash cash, mm-hmm. so people can understand the, how you resound your voice, yeah. it has to stretch, right? Wow. And there's some other things you can do. Like you could do the same thing of the ABCs, mm-hmm. right? And it may seem like silly, but it goes a long way. Why? Why? Because that air circulates back into your throat. It meets the air coming up from your lungs and it causes a cushioning called subglottal pressure. I don't want to get too nerdy on you. All right. And because of that, it starts to relax the muscles. So imagine if you didn't get any sleep. Yeah. Imagine if you stressed out. Imagine you didn't drink a lot of water yeah. and then you started to just emotionally eat. Mm. And then on top of that, you're dealing with anxiety to the wooza. Mm. And so you go ahead and you do, you take uh, some alcohol to relax. But on top of that, you go and you take sedatives and a sleeping pill and then you're wondering why your voice ain't showing up. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you do these things for your voice. And the average speaker never thinks about it. So every time, and you're going hard with podcasts. Mm-hmm. So every time you're doing podcasts, you have to be able to warm up. Right. And after every podcast, including this one, I'm mm-hmm. going to make sure yeah. you cool down your voice. Wow. Okay. That's like a whole process. I know. Yeah. And it's funny because like, like, I mean, it's to the point where after every speaking engagement, I can feel, you know, the tiredness in my vocals. And I just... You know, I get uh, this tea. I drink tea um, um, that, I, that I was told, you know, is so... Like throat coat? Yeah, throat coat. That's what it is, yeah. <laughs> so, so what is it called? Throat coat. Is it called vocal cord coat? It's not. No, exactly. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's throat coat. Yeah. It, it, it coats the throat, yeah. right? So with the vocal cords, though, you can't see it with the natural eye. You would literally have to go to a doctor to put something down your nostril all the way down or your mm. mouth to see it with a camera, right? So the thing that that allows us to survive every day called the epiglottis, mm. when you swallow that water, that tea, the epiglottis pushes it away from your voice box, mm. which is literally where your um, trachea is, your windpipe for your lungs, mm. and it takes it to the stomach. Mm. So it never touches the vocal cords at all. And that's crazy because I know, like, I know this is probably... Somebody's at, somebody wants to know this question. Yeah. Um, and so it's not a stupid question. I'm just going to preface <laughs> it that. But so the throat and the vocal cord is two different things. They, ne- they, don't, they don't live in the same house. So the like, throat muscle is called, yeah, the throat muscle is called the pharynx. Yes. P-H-A-R-Y-N-X. The voice box is called the larynx. Mm. L-A-R-Y-N-X. So the voice box is housed in the throat, but there's something that separates it called the epiglottis mm. that every time you swallow your spit or your saliva or you know tea or food, the vocal cords are the door to your lungs mm. by way of the trachea. Mm-hmm. So the only thing that gets in there is air. Wow. As a matter of fact, you can't even speak without air. Wow. So try to breathe in and say your name at the same time. Mm. Everybody try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to breathe in. You can't do it. You can't do it. But put your hand like this and say your name. What do you feel? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. That's how you were created. You were created where your voice, you cannot speak or sing or do anything without air. <laughs> right. It's so dope. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Everybody try it, right? Like, <laughs> try to wow. breathe in and say your name. You can't. Wow. You can't. Wow. And the, that's why, that's the myth that I have to correct. Yeah. Is that people think, well, I'm just drinking this tea. I'm doing this lemon. I'm doing this honey. But it's not doing anything for you. That's a psychological myth. You see what I'm saying? Wow. So at the end of the day, no, there rest, hydration, and just and just being quiet and then learning proper ways to breathe and support your your voice and learning education about your voice. That's what's gonna keep you healthy. Wow. And warming up. Hey yo, if your mind ain't blown right now. <laughs> 
Because because honestly, like now, I mean, you can't unhear this, right? Now, when yeah. you think about um, even my nine to fivers, like you don't even have to be an entrepreneur, yeah. right? Think about uh, if you like where you work. Uh, uh, if you work, you know, with only computers and you ain't got to talk to somebody, then fine, don't don't worry about it, right? But majority of people work in a space where they have to communicate, they have to talk. Um, you know, if you're a manager, you have to talk. Like yeah. it's so so so. Wow, this is this is great. And so so talk to me about um, you know how can somebody right like there's so many ways to make money, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, as a vocal coach, yeah. how can somebody make six figures with their voice? Absolutely. Well, it's interesting. Everybody that you've interviewed has made six figures with their voice. Mm, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, being a sports commentator, podcaster, YouTuber, audiobooks, mm. right? Uh, jingles, mm. commercials, all right? Um, people that are out there and they're literally um, using their voice. As a matter of fact, there are people that actually use their voice for others for... Um, Voice, I don't know if you know vocoders. I don't know what that if you know what that is. Mm -hmm. But there are literal so many ways. The the main ones for us, especially in the digital space, is podcasting, YouTubing, audiobooks, commercials, jingles, um, actually doing um video voiceovers. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing right now. Uh commercials for any kind of products, merchandise, anything like that are definitely ways that people are using now um their voice to create a six figure digital asset. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I teach singers and speakers to go beyond just this. And of course, public speaking, yeah. right? Masterminds, yeah. IG lives. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. I mean, like the, it's limitless of how you, and then of course, understanding monetization, yeah. right? And how to do that. Because it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to start a podcast, mm -hmm. but it ain't just starting a podcast. You still have to learn how to monetize on that. Um, and I think the biggest, you know what the money maker is? Mm -hmm. Trust. Mm. Have you ever trusted somebody you've never spoken to? Mm. Wow. And the reason is, is because the human voice yeah. carries inflections and tones that literally sways consumer, um, how consumers buy. Wow. wow. So people, people, when you see people that are spokespersons and commercials or television shows and stuff like that, they know why they put them there. Not just because of their celebrity status or anything like that, but their voice also does something from a psychological standpoint wow. to build trust. Wow. Wow, that's powerful. And so, man, like, like I, I, I need, I need all the help, right? <laughs> because, <laughs> because I'm telling you, like, I've, I've always um, known that as I speak, like, even you know, like, you know, when when I do podcasts, yeah. I know because I'm going to be interviewing uh, so many people uh, that I, I'm just like, all right, after I'm done, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, relax the voice. Um, but you wrote an ebook called The Vocal Blueprint, yeah. right? And then you, you know, you're sharing, you know, you know, seven voice care secrets every speaker, singer uh, should know to secure the bag. Um, what exactly are the seven voice care secrets? I'm gonna get, you want me to give you all of them? <laughs> give, give me some. Yeah, don't give me all. Give me some. Give me some. Uh, all right. Well, the first thing first, you have to know the hard facts. Yeah. Um, and the hard facts is one, I'll share a couple hard facts. So you do know the color of healthy vocal cords? They're white. Mm. A lot of people think they're pink, right? Mm. But they're white. And the reason is because your vocal cords have no blood, no, um, they barely have blood supply, which mm. means that they don't feel pain. Did you know mm. that? I didn't know they that. have no nerve endings. Mm. So one of the first secrets is you have to learn the hard facts about your voice, mm. right? For example, I'm not going to go and invest 20, 30K into you if I don't know anything about you. Right. I'm going to go and learn the facts about Ash Cash right. because if I'm going to put my investment in that, and so it's the same thing. People don't pay attention if they don't pay for anything, right? right? Yeah. So because of that, you have to know the facts about your voice, including how it works, yeah. what causes it to work, and what can damage it. Yeah. And so that's one of the secrets that I teach is learning the hard facts. So I teach you, um, yeah, a little nerdy stuff, but yeah. it's but it's good nerdy stuff because it's the things that you don't know that will harm you. Yeah. Um, other thing is eliminate the bad habits. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're not sleeping enough. Yeah. We're sleep deprived. Yeah. And so study actually shows that the, the the average human adult needs a minimum of seven hours and 13 minutes a day mm. in order to function properly. Wow. Anything under that, the brain actually calculates it as someone under DY. Wow. And so because of that, we're finding more studies where people are sleep deprived. And as a result of that, their vocal cords are actually being um um affected because of it. So you're going all day, but you only had four hours of sleep mm -hmm. and you're wondering why your voice is going. Yeah. 
Ain't no drink that's going to help that. Right. There's no tea that's going to help that. Right. You got to go rest. I remember for Neil's mastermind, Neil, how many hours did you sleep? Four hours? No. Mm. He had to leave mm. and his actual prescription for the day was go and sleep. Wow. Wow. Go and sleep. Yeah. Because millions of dollars was on the line. Right. Right? Um, you need to have a contingency plan. Mm. Voice insurance. Yeah. All right? That's another secret that a lot of people don't know. Yeah. You have to have a money voice five. Mm. So not just um, having a vocal a vocal health coach, that's one, but you need a therapist, mm. all right? Because the voice, the soul, they're all connected. Body, mind, souls, but they're all connected. Um, you need to have an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Mm. So for you, I would definitely say find an ENT in the local area and make sure that at least two or three times a year, like how you go to the dentist, mm. you need to go and see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. All right. Um, another thing, too, is mindset over skill set, mm. because there's a lot of people that are talented and gifted. But right now they don't even believe mm. that their voice. Some people cringe to hear themselves back, right, right. you know. And so I teach on mindset versus skill set first, because if you don't believe that your voice is enough, no one else is going to believe it yeah. as well. Um, another secret that I actually teach about is you have to unlock and eliminate the, the diction dilemma. Mm. Not because we speak English means we have proper good diction, mm. you know? And a lot of us, like, I know I'm West Indian, mm. you're West Indian, mm. you, you know, speak another language, speak broken English, mm. right? So lots of times we don't realize that diction actually affects even intonation, mm. right? So things like that I teach my speakers, microphone etiquette, mm. right? Especially when speakers get on stage yeah. and they're doing mastermind and you have a lapel mic, but the, the lapel mic is poor quality, yeah. right? And then you're screaming over it and you're wondering why your voice is gone. Yeah. So I teach you about how to choose the correct mic for your voice mm -hmm. and how to choose the correct mic for your voice frequency. Yeah. All yeah. right? Yeah. I teach that as well. And so there's a plethora yeah. of, of secrets there that yeah. I have in my um, vocal blueprint. Yeah, I need, I need that. Y'all need that. Y'all got to pick, <laughs> pick that up, you know, ASAP. Um, and and I, th I think one of the, the, the ahas that I've had so far is um, diet. Yes. You know, you talked about you know, I, I I mean, I don't drink alcohol, but just some of the other, um, you know, things that you may eat um, that, you know, you know, affect your voice, yeah. right? And 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 to because 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 even just now, um, you know, you you mentioned you know when I cleared my throat, you were like, hey, you cleared your throat because there's mucus in there, yeah. right? And then when I think about why there's mucus, there's mucus based on my diet. I might be eating things that are creating mucus, and then and then inflammation. Like, how does inflammation um, affect the voice? Absolutely, great, great question. So, remember, I said you sound like what you eat. Yeah. Right. So, so what do I eat? Oh. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I was gonna tell you no. Do, 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 so what, do, what? I, do you eat saspoa legumes, banana pente. Um, but no, no, that's a great question. Well, first and foremost, mucus is good for you. Okay. Okay, let me just say that. There's something in our body called good mucus. Mm -hmm. All right. And the reason why we have good mucus, your saliva has it, your blood has it. It's a it's a it, it actually um protects your cells, right? But it's a cleanser for your sinus ducts from any allergens. Mm. But what happens is when we start to get sick, like when we have the flu or the common cold or COVID, mm. why do you think COVID was so big amongst people of color? Yeah. Because we are filled with mucus. Mm. And so that's why so many of us were dying from it. And now people have COVID voice. Mm. Have you heard of COVID voice? No. Yes. A lot of people end up having vocal damage because of COVID and they can't recover from it wow. because of that. So to answer your question, when you eat certain foods like, yes, dairy, mm. but things like fatty meats, okay, mm. chicken and pork and beef, and moderation is key because I, I eat chicken, right? Yeah. But moderation is key. Or things like um, corn, sugary foods, fried foods, breaded, you know, things like that. What it does, it it enhances the mucus in the body. Mm. And that causes something called histamine to rise. Mm. And when that rises, that causes inflammation and infection. So when you are dealing with buildup in mucus or um, uh, post-nasal drip and stuff like that, you run to the over-the-counter and you get an antihistamine called a decongestant, mm -hmm. like a Flonase, mm -hmm. a Zyrtec, mm -hmm. a Claritin. But what happens is they eliminate the good mucus with the bad mucus mm -hmm. and they dehydrate. So when you are taking that Flonase or that Zyrtec and you're like, yo, why is my throat so dry? Mm -hmm. It's because you're eliminating even the good mucus that's there to protect you. Wow. And so you, you want to make sure, and a lot of us are dealing with inflammation because of diet, the things that we're eating, the, the, the white rice, the white pasta, 
pasta, the white breads, you know, the, the, the fast foods, things like that. And so we need to reverse it by doing more dark green leafy foods. We need to reverse it by doing more low um, fatty meats like fish, right? Uh, lamb and turkey. We need to do a lot more water, coconut water, you know, things like that. Wow. The things people don't like to right, eat. Right, right. 100%. 100%. <laughs> well, we need to balance it, okay? 100%. Yeah. I, I love that. And so... Let, let, let's let's talk a little bit about, you know, like, you know, business, your business now. Yeah, right. Because yeah. um, I think that like, I mean, I, I could I could go on and on yeah. about getting, you know, especially as a speaker yeah. and as somebody that knows that my voice is an asset. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's why I, like I got to get I get your ebook ASAP. Um, and 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 so but let's talk about about your business. Yeah. Right. Like, how were you able um, to scale your business? Yeah. Uh, to multiple six figures, yeah. Um, you know, you know, give us, give us, give us some of some of the things that that yeah. worked for you. So what happened to me was the truth. I got drained. Mm. I was in so de- so much demand. Yeah. I was literally seeing about forty to fifty clients in four days. Wow. One to one, and I loved what I did, but I would get home and I would be so drained. Wow. And I'm like, "Yo, this can't be life, yeah, 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 right?" Yeah, yeah. And I, by the time I had already made six figures and stuff like that, but I was not doing systems. Yeah, I wasn't doing automation, and yeah. so I'm like, "How can I? This is I can't be working like a dog right, like this." Right, right. Um, and so I, I, I literally had to say, "Okay." How can I do less but make more money? And yeah. that's how I got into systems yeah. and automating. So what I started to do was the first program I developed, I said, no, I need to train more vocal coaches mm. because I couldn't find, I needed to give vocal coaches to people, but there weren't any quality vocal coaches out there yeah. that I know would be able to, if I said, hey, I can't, I'm I'm dealing with you over here. I need you to go see Ash because mm. Ash has an upcoming engagement. Mm. I need to make sure that somebody I can trust can do that, yeah. right? Yeah. I just couldn't find people like that to do that. So I built a certification program program mm. where it was my first 90 day DIY mm. certification program for speakers and s- singers and especially during the pandemic. Mm. Why? Because a lot of singers didn't have work anymore. They right, couldn't tour. Right. Yeah, they couldn't yeah. do anything. And yeah. so a lot of people were struggling. And so, yeah, I took that and I said, no, I'm going to create an online course. Mm. And so I started certifying coaches. Mm. Right. And then after that, I'm like, okay, but still I need to do more. Mm. So with that, I started to say, I'm not doing any one-to-one anymore. Mm. I'm doing group coaching. Yeah. 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 And so if you want access to me, you're going to have to pay more. So right. I doubled my price. Right, right. I doubled my price. And, yeah. and I think to the Neos and stuff like that, because I literally started saying, yo, I'm t- I got bored making six figures. Mm. And I'm like, I'm tired of making six figures. Mm. So I had to go look to see the people that's making eight, nine, and seven. What yeah. are they doing? Yeah, yeah. And really and truly, that's what really got me to scale. It was yeah. me being bored of making six figures. Yeah. And it's I, you know, a couple, couple of things I want to unpack. Like, you know, a lot of people focus on six figures. And yeah. Um, you could hustle your way to six figures, but to get to that next level, get to, to get the to seven, level. like you, you have to have systems. It has to be delegation. To. You have to hire people. Like there's no way that you're going to make seven figures as a hustler. That's not possible. Like you need a, a team, you know, to, to build that. And so I, you know, I love that you said, Hey, I got, I got bored. Like I got bored with six figures and I'm trying to figure out how I get to the next level. But the other thing I love, because, you know, you know, I, I, I'm a, book coach, right? Mm-hmm. And so I help, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, small business folks uh, create six and seven figure businesses from their book. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because that's one of the, you know, there, there's 15 streams of income that you can make from your book. One of the things that I actually talk about is, you know, creating a, a certification. Yes. And so for you to create a certification, uh, which is is just a genius idea as anybody yeah. who's an expert at something who wants to scale to the next level, yeah. you know, create a certification program is such next level and it's going to help you because at the end of the day, not only are you allowing someone else to teach your philosophy and your expertise in the name of which, you know, how you do it. Yeah. And now they're spreading your word. Now they're spreading your philosophy. Now others c- kind of going to want, you know, yeah. want to learn from the, the expert. Yeah. Um, and so, 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 so I love that. But then, the, but then the other thing I don't want anybody to miss is when you create programs it allows you to charge more to, for access to you. Listen, one of the things that happened, I got my time back. Yeah. I got my time back. 100%. And what happens is 
how I got my time back because as I created group coaching um, and I created a Voice Masters Academy, then my coaches came and taught for me. Mm. So I just showed up yeah. just to do Q&A. Yeah. Right? I got my time back. Yeah. And so therefore, it allowed me to double and triple my price for the people that want access to me. Right. And one of the plays that I definitely have is what I normally do is I just have my students and I have my coaches actually do all the testimonials mm. because I don't have to do much about it. And yeah. so let me tell you something. Scaling is the way to go. Yeah. And the way to do it is really true, truly about getting your time back by creating systems yeah. where you can still impact a whole bunch of people, but you can actually have people under you that's doing that too. And you said something about um, scaling and bringing a, a team. Yeah. That also caused me to scale too. Mm. When I hired my first operations manager mm. and mm. virtual assistants, yeah. right? And things like that. Like, it was like, Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. I don't have to do this by myself? Yeah. Because lots of times, can I be honest with 100%. you? We were never taught financial literacy. Oh, never. So we were taught you go to school, get yeah. a four-year degree, and I don't I have degrees, mm -hmm. right? But then you go work for somebody mm -hmm. and you save up your money till you're 65 to just spend what 10 years to enjoy it. Right. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, it's just like that's not life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and but even in entrepreneurship, sometimes we feel we have to do it by ourselves. Yeah. And I realize I, there's a saying that says anything. That is expandable. You have to share it. Mm. If you wanted to go to the next level, you yeah. can't keep it to yourself. So you know one of the hacks that I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna white label my curriculum. Oh, oh wait, that's too much. That's like that's too much. That's too much. <laughs> that's too much. That's too much. <laughs> yeah, you you want to we want to go to the eight and nine figures. Mm. That's where to go. So I don't mind. Wow, wait, like my, like she just blew my mind just now. So like I, like that's too much. T take that out. Edit that out. No, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> All right, so cool. So you know, now, so 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 talk to me. So now, where, where, where Shayla is right now, yeah. Um, if Shayla could go back and talk to her eighteen-year-old self, uh, what what advice is she giving eighteen-year-old Shayla? Who? Mm. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, um, take a deep breath. It's gonna be okay. Mm. Um, I would say that first. Yeah. I wouldn't even do a business or anything like that. I would just say that it's okay. Yeah. Like you don't have to figure everything out so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh, the second thing I would say is that mentorship is important. Yeah. Sit at the feet of people. Information is what's going... Your net worth increases with your network. Yeah, and sometimes sitting sitting at the feet of people sometimes could be just serving somebody. Yeah. So for me, serve more. Like mm -hmm. don't have to always feel like you have to, you got to get in. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to be blessed and you're going to get an opportunity. So I would say that to my 18 year old self. Yeah. Um, I would say save, mm -hmm. but I would also say invest mm -hmm. because I'm in between old school and new school. Yeah. So my 18 year old self back then was just like save. Mm -hmm. But if I would tell my 18 year old self now, I would say save and invest. Mm -hmm. Right? Like open up yourself to learning how to invest and finding ways of how to make your money work for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then I would say the last thing I would say is you got to make sure that you know your purpose. Yeah. What yeah. is your reason for being? Yeah. And I always say, this is how you find your purpose. Can I share it? Mm -hmm. And this is what I would say to my 18-year-old self or any 18-year-old that's out here that's trying to figure out, what do I do? I've been listening to these podcasts. What do I do? You find out first, what do you love to do? Mm -hmm. I want you to write it down on a piece of paper. What do you love to do? Okay. What are you good at? Mm. What can you get paid for? And how can you meet the needs of others? Mm. When what you love to do intersects with what you're good at, mm. you may love to cook, but you may not be good at it. Mm. All right. So how do you know that you're good at it when it's proven? Mm. Like people say you're good at yeah. it. Right. That's your passion. Mm. Then what? whenever what you're good at, when it intersects with what you can get paid for, how you can make money, that's your profession, mm. right? And then when what you can make money from what you're good at, what you love to do and what you're good at, when it can meet the needs of others and you can create mm. a payoff, yeah. that's your vocation. Mm. And that's a difference. There's a difference between your profession mm -hmm. and your vocation. Mm. Profession says, I'm good at it. I can get paid for it. Vocation says, and even if I never make a dime, I'll mm. still do it because wow. I'm meeting the needs of others. And when you can meet the needs of others and it goes back to the fact that you love to do it, that's your mission. Wow. So when your passion intersects with your profession, intersects with your vocation, intersects with your mission, that's when you know that you are living in purpose. And that's why mentorship is so important mm -hmm. because mentors are the navigators. They're the GPS that can get you there. Yeah, yeah. And so I wish mm -hmm. I had known that then. Yeah. That's what I would say to my 18-year-old self. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's what I'd say. Wow. That... That was so powerful. Wow. Yeah. And so um, 
what would you say is the most um, extravagant thing that you've done with money so far? Uh, well, I just, I got a birthday gift. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. That is nice. That is nice. Um, okay. I believe in, you know, making your money work for you, but yeah. I also believe in treating yourself. Yeah. I've worked hard. Yeah. Um, and so extravagant. You know what I want to do? Mm. Well, the extravagant therapy. Mm. Yeah. I know. It might not be extravagant to everybody else, yeah. but it's extravagant to me. The fact that I can afford it. Mm. Yeah. And I can afford as many as I want to. Yeah. And I can afford the best mm. of it. Yeah. You yeah. see what I'm saying? I um, I've never really been into materialistic things. Yeah. If I'm going to buy something, it has to make money for me. Yeah. If I'm going to invest my money. And those things are back order too. So you, you yeah, already know Yeah, if I have to make money, up. it has yeah. to accrue for me. You, know you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, As a Rolex, matter of fact, for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Just but in I, case. I think, that, I think coming up, I want to do with Maldives. Mm, okay. I think that would be something that I'd like to do for myself. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then what would you say is the uh, most impactful thing you've done with money so far? Mentorship. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 By far. Yeah. Yeah. No, I And I, I, I believe in not just what I've I've invested in multiple mentorship programs. Yeah. I think last year I spent a hundred K mm, in mentorship. Yeah. But I made it back. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm at I'm at I'm at one twenty five this yeah. year so far. And yeah. we still yeah. uh you know early. All right. So we're gonna do a lightning round. Yeah. Um Ooh. and so what we <laughs> what we do is we take uh bank terms. Oh, no. uh, and we flip them uh, for us because we're literally inside the vault. Yes. Um, and so the first term we're gonna do is deposit slip. Yeah. Uh, deposit slip. You take a slip. You you know you write you know write it down. Take it to the bank and you put money in the bank. Yeah. For us, the deposit slip is um, you know a, a mistake, a money mistake, a slip up. Right. Yeah. What would you say has been your biggest deposit slip? So far in your journey, as far as me putting in no, making mistakes, your making biggest mistake, money mistake, yeah. um, allowing people to make with too many withdrawals. Mm, okay, yeah, I had taken inventory. Yeah, for me, um, I look at the first five people in my phone. Yeah, and I determine are they making more withdrawals, and so yeah. my biggest mistake is I allowed people to make too many withdrawals. Wow. Um, and not enough deposits. Mm, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you flipped that, right? I did. <laughs> uh, turn number two is a charge-off, right? Yeah. And a charge-off, you borrow money from the bank, you don't pay the money back. Eventually, the bank is like, listen, you know, we're going to try to get it back, but eventually, they're like, All right, I'm going to charge this, this debt off, right? Yeah. Uh, for us inside the vault, a charge-off uh, is what type of people or mindsets did you have to charge off during your journey? Uh, people that don't, that just... First thinking, thinking. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know the saying: if you hang around uh, five, four people, you're gonna be the sixth one. 100%, and yeah. if you hang around, you know, five millionaires, you'll be the sixth one. Yeah. And so, for me, the charge off is I had to be able to understand that everybody just can't go. Yeah. With yeah. me, it it is what it is. No hard feelings. Yeah. I still love you. Yeah. Um, but where I'm going and where God has me going, you just can't come. Yeah. And yeah. I had to be okay with saying no. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, ATM. Another teachable moment, yeah. right? You, man. When I when I tell y'all, y'all better rewind this. Y'all better <laughs> share this. Y'all better rewind this and listen, because she dropped a lot of valuable gems. <laughs> a lot of you know, you, uh, like I'm telling you, like I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind it because there's some things that you said. So give us one more, right? Like yeah. when when you know, look at this camera. Tell you know, tell tell our people. Give us one more yeah. teachable moment. Something yeah. that they're gonna they can walk away with that's gonna make their life better. Um, I want to say something to you. It may sound really, really simple, but it carries a lot of weight. And I want you to say to yourself right now, I need you to speak it out because when you speak it out, it actually manifests, right? Um, you really, your world is determined by your words. So I want you to say this, I am enough. I just want you to say that. Because when you say that, it cancels out every lie that was said about you. It cancels out even every lie you've thought about yourself. And lots of times they're just thoughts. They're not even real. There's a difference between truth and reality. Mm -hmm. See, your truth may be like, you know, I don't have it. I don't have the resources, but you may have resourcefulness. And so at the end of the day, I want you to know that you are enough. And another thing I want you to know that you're not too late. You're just on time. All right. Everyone has a place where they're learning things. And for you, this is the perfect moment for you to be where you need to be in this moment to get the things that you need in order to go to the next level. Stop looking at everyone else. I need you to know that you are enough. You're not late. You're right on time. Now, I just want you to breathe and just sit in that. Sit in it. 
You got to change the way you think it. And the first thing is you got to speak it so that you can be able to understand that is the reality. What you may think is the truth, what you see on Instagram and social media and stuff like that, or even what somebody said to you, it's not it. But the reality is you are so dope and people are out here waiting for you to show up. So don't waste another show up. Don't waste another show up. When somebody asks you to come and speak, when somebody asks you to come and be in the room, even if it's not your platform, show up because you never know the blessing that's on the other side. And that's what I would say to somebody. Normally I would yell it, but to, <laughs> to, to preserve, preserve my voice, bars, gold <laughs> bars. Uh, <laughs> I like I enjoyed this so much. Oh Thank you so much, Shayla. Oh, it was su- it's such an honor. Um, you know, you know, definitely we want everybody to check out yeah. the vocal blueprint. Um, you guys can go to insidevocalblueprint.com. You know, please tell them um, you know, w- you know, what they'll learn, you know, yeah. from this the, the vocal blueprint. Absolutely. So from the vocal blueprint, you're going to learn first and foremost about the fact that I just said that you're, that you are enough. Your voice is enough, right? You're going to learn about what you need to do to not just monetize, but maximize and optimize your voice so that you can see it beyond just what you think it is. Um, learn how to treat it, maintain it, and then also learn how to monetize on it. Learn how to really understand that it is voice equity for you. Yeah. That really and truly it can accrue for you if you really learn to invest well into it. Yeah. So that's, it's for anyone, any any high-performing speaker or singer looking to secure the bag, ensure the voice, and ensure the gig, this book is for them. Mm, love it, love it. All right, y'all. Another powerful episode of Inside the Vault. Uh, if somebody wanted to connect with you online, like yeah, where can they find you? Absolutely. Um, on all social media platforms at Ashayla Shanae. Uh, so the first three letters of Ash hey. and then A-A-L-A. So A-S-H-A-A-L-A-S-H-A-N-A-E. You can find me on all digital platforms. And you can even go to live and also find everything about me there. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right, y'all. <laughs> we are closing out the vault Another powerful episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. Make sure you like, share, review, subscribe to the podcast, right? I know, you know, if, you, if you're watching the visual, make sure you subscribe. If you're listening to it, you probably subscribe already, so go and rate and review it. But we appreciate you for tapping in. Make sure you visit us at InsideTheVaultShow.com. Uh, also, follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Me, I am Ash Cash. Make sure you visit me, IamAshCash.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at IamAshCash. And I'll see you next time for another powerful episode on the greatest money mindset show on the planet, Inside the Vault. I'll see you next time, same time, same place, in God's will. All right, y'all. Peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You won't ask cash. You can catch it right here in the vault.